Today's episode of Fairy Fortunes contains a trigger warning as we discuss the very taboo subject of death. If you would like to learn about fairy folklore, delve into modern fairy faith spirituality, and explore fun and fanciful fairy-themed events, please subscribe to Fairy Fortunes for new videos every Friday. My theme for my depth year for the month of August is uh, the House of Death. The work that I'm doing with death during the month of August really doesn't have a lot to do with ancestor work. A lot of pagan practices involve some kind of ancestor reverence. I don't incorporate ancestor reverence in my practice. The work with death that I'm doing is really trying to understand living. <laughs> I, I know that sounds um, like an oxymoron, but sometimes when we see the end of our journey, it makes us appreciate the journey. When you see the ending, perhaps, of a goal, uh, it makes you work harder towards that goal. And that's what I'm trying to accomplish with working with the House of Death during the month of August for my depth year. My depth year themes are taken from the houses of geomancy, which are also the houses of astrology. And in ancient times, it was a very common practice to go to an astrologer or geomancer and ask about the nature of your death. It was akin to life insurance at the time. There was no way to prepare for death except to see a diviner and talk about it and prepare for it. It seems to me that in older times, we had, as a culture, a very different relationship with death. The cemetery that I'm visiting today was established in 1859, and this cemetery has benches to, that were constructed for the living to sit in. It has pathways and even a pond and places where families can picnic. That used to be a very common practice, is coming to the cemetery on anniversaries of the death and also on celebrations of the birthday to celebrate who the person was. And that was considered commonplace, normal, and respectful. But we don't really have a relationship with death like that anymore. Cemeteries are kind of this place that we avoid. In modern times, the subject of death is very controversial in divination. And so the house of death and things like the death card in tarot is now talked about in a way, in a relationship to change. Because death is the ultimate version of change and so in modern context it is looked at as an avenue of change and has nothing to do with an actual death. One of the most profound lessons that I've learned working on the house of death during the month of August for my death year is that in a meditation I was asked, are you willing to be forgotten? I learned that I was obsessed with having a legacy, of leaving something of myself behind in this world. And it's not so much that I'm afraid of death, I'm afraid of leading a meaningless life. I think it is somewhat natural to want to have a legacy. To feel that you've become immortal on Earth. 
that you won't be forgotten in history. And the lesson that, of course, I was given was that it's likely that you will be forgotten, but that doesn't mean that you weren't important, that you weren't valued, that you weren't loved. In my journey through death, I learned that I'm a very unforgiving person. I was of the mind that saying the words, I forgive you, was admitting defeat, that it was erroneous. But I forgive you, I have since learned after taking this journey through death. is when the process of healing begins. You may not ever be able to fix everything. You may not be able to undo regrets and mistakes. But I forgive you begins the healing. It's a process. And so, have added forgiveness to a regular practice now. I've talked about my practice of gratitude, pride, and happiness. And now I've added a fourth element to that, forgiveness, gratitude, pride, and happiness. I try to, every night, think of at least one thing to forgive myself for. I think of one thing that I'm grateful for one thing that I'm proud of that day, and one thing that makes me happy. And this is not to erase the problem or fix it entirely. This is merely an action to start the healing process and to open the pathways to new opportunities. For me, exploring the finality of death helped me embrace the meaning in life.